So can State Farm go bankrupt? They are teetering on a very tough situation right now because they just got downgraded from what's called an A to a B. That's significant because there's a lot in between. You got the A pluses, the A minuses, the B plus, and there's all of these ratings that a company called AM Best ranks a company. And they're not ranking the company based on the preferred claims and the preferred company as far as customers are concerned. They're ranking the company based on the stability of their finances. Have they invested correctly? Are they strong to pay out all of the claims that may occur from an accident that you may have? State Farm, unfortunately, has been downgraded, which is a massive issue for this company. A lot of people are like, oh, well, what's a rating? It sounds simple, but let's dive in a little bit further and explain exactly what's happening with the downgrade with State Farm. By the way, I know a lot of agents here are probably watching this video. If you are a consumer and at any point you're looking for car or home insurance, I'll put a link in the description below where you can work with one of the local independent agents. It's an option outside of this if you are a State Farm customer or just generally looking for some better options for your insurance. So let's take a step back. In 2022 and 2023, State Farm Farm is showing significant losses on their car insurance. That's what most people think is the cause of this. But every article I see and read talks about the fact that they're pulling out of California. And I think the biggest issue that they're seeing is the homes in California are causing way more underwriting losses than the auto. I actually made a video that goes a little bit further in depth. I'll link it at the end that goes over the 14 plus billion dollars that State Farm lost in 2023 going into 2024 that plays a pretty significant deal. That's not the only thing too. We're gonna to talk about what's coming next and what you can expect to see from them. So them non-renewing 72,000 plus homeowners in California is going to play a huge impact. You gotta think of it both ways. You're like, oh, they're gonna save a bunch of money, but they're not necessarily. It depends on the risk. And the risk has gotten a little bit lighter probably this year over last year, and it actually has been more predictable. So the insurance companies can predict what's gonna happen. The only problem is the state California is restricting the ability to raise the price accordingly. Now that's good for the people that live there, but it's bad because companies like Farmers and State Farm, and I believe five other, six other companies have pulled out of that state and said non-renew, there's nowhere for you to go. So now your price is just going up and up. It starts to become a monopoly for the smaller companies to charge more because they can't afford or even take on the risk that it is to be had. What State Farm is doing is they're non-renewing up to 72,000 policyholders. They are over, I believe 15, almost 18% of all of the homes in California. That's pretty massive. That's just like farmers in Texas, who also, by the way, is pulling out or not renewing a ton of the business, and that's their number one state. So it's very similar situations that we're having, but the main pain point for State Farm is California. In general, they actually made money with life insurance over the last 12 months. There's also a really big issue, like I said, we're gonna talk about that here with their future model and what's gonna happen because of this. So nobody Nobody wants to talk about it. They all just want to say AM Best ranked it differently and nobody wants to dive in and actually go over the details. Well, that's where the video I'll link at the end does go a little bit further. I know I'm not getting super detailed because I already made a video on it and you see where all of this is happening. It's more so the future that you can expect is what's going to happen next. What is the implication of all of this that going from an A to a B, how will that affect them? Well, a couple things. So let's go back to the California piece. They're losing the business, yes, they're not renewing it, so they're gonna save millions if not billions of dollars there, but they're also not taking in money. By cutting the losses there, they're negative losses, they'll leave the whole state. Once the state starts to turn around, which it actually is showing signs of, the state starting to let companies increase the rate of their insurance. They just had a company go 30 or 40% increase, which sounds ridiculous, but if that's the only way they can survive and it's still a cheaper deal, yeah, put them in my door. I'll buy that product if I have to. I don't want it, but if it's my only option, let's go for it. They're gonna wait for all of that to clear over. And once that has cleared over and everybody's raised their rates, they'll probably come back into the state at a higher cost. Instead of getting the negative name calling and ah, they're gonna get that on the 72,000 plus people, but the people are gonna understand it's just business, right? They're just leaving because they can't afford it. They're gonna wait it out, sit in the chair and say, okay, play the soccer game. All right, my turn to come in when it's 10 to one and I, we won the game, right? So they're going to play that waiting game because they can afford it. They are 
probably the largest, if not the second largest insurance, PNC insurance. That's home and auto insurance company in the nation. They actually hold, you know, we said 18% in California, they hold almost 10% across the US. So there's way more states that they can focus on and just reallocate the money that they would have spent on California on other states. So what's gonna happen next? What are we gonna see going forward? There's a big issue that I just recently read an article from a friend of mine, Nikki West, for posting up a article. This was amazing. And the, re the read was about how the commercial industry is starting to be hurt, not from an insurance standpoint. The commercial dues are coming due. So essentially, if you have a commercial building and you're getting insurance on it, and you have a loan for let's just say 2%. And that 2% loan is ending in 2024, which the majority or way more than normal is happening this year. Because the rates have gone up so much, to renew that purchase, the loan on that building, it's astronomical. These places, these people, these companies can't afford to renew the loans on these when the loans come due. They also can't afford to pay them. And so what's gonna happen is these larger corporations are gonna become insolvent. You've seen it. Some companies, some major companies, insurance companies do millions of dollars have just disappeared. Sears, where are they today? Toys R Us, where are they today? When the industry changes and shifts, and if they don't move correctly with it, some are gonna make the right move. Some have already done that. A lot of them have it. But what happens is State Farm also offers some different products like life insurance. What do you do when you make all that money and there's just millions of dollars just sitting on your table? You don't want it to sit there because they say money gets bored and leaves. And it's true, the inflation kicks in and the money's worth less over time. And the longer you just let it sit there, the less it's worth. So we invest that. State Farm is likely has invested a lot of that into the commercial industry. Just like MetLife has to put a ton of money into the commercial building industry. And typically that's made money over and over, but if it becomes insolvent, just like GM did years ago when they went insolvent, essentially government had to step in and help them out. This may become a larger issue where that B might even go down further if State Farm doesn't take the right actions. They've already hired a new CEO, so that's the move that they're making. What you can expect to see from them going forward is some big changes. You're going to see, like we talked about in the last video, a lot of employees are not gonna be employed there. They're not gonna do these extra things that they've done in the past. You're gonna still see them do donations because they have money, they're not bankrupt. They're just gotta be careful. They're going to still keep donating to causes and doing the Jake from State Farm commercials and all of the things that you would see them in a good light because they also have to make sure that you are purchasing policies from them. Being the number one guy, it's hard to stay at the top. I likely think that they're gonna drop down to the third slot, if not the fourth slot, if they don't make the right moves. So Mark, yeah, shut up and tell me what's going on. <laughs> Again, talked in circles. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if it was just a just jarble or if you understood what we were saying. Prices are going up. State Farm cannot sustain what they have going forward, especially if what we just talked about, the commercial real estate industry goes under. If that starts to drop and flop, you're going to see State Farm and all of these major companies that are invested into those scenarios get even hurt worse. On top of it, if they don't pull out of states like they are doing in California, so they're making the right move there as far as their financial standpoint, and then reinvesting it into the right places, then you're gonna see the rates go up and up everywhere. They are fairly competitive. They have won a lot of customers based on price and based on the brand loyalty. Their colors are the same colors as the Chiefs. It's not your brand loyalty if you're a Chiefs fan. They've ingrained that, that in your head. If you're a Chiefs fan, you're a State Farm customer. And some people follow that true and true versus just getting the right policy for the right person. That's where a lot of these other videos will go a little bit more in depth. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Am I completely crazy or do you think State Farm is looking at some major issues beyond just getting downgraded from an A to an B? I know every other insurance agent under the sun is gonna be talking about it, especially when they're quoting customers that are from State Farm. They're gonna put that fear in your ear and it's actually legitimate this time. If you are shopping for car insurance, like I said, I'll put the link in the description below. Otherwise, if you wanna learn more about the losses, the $6 billion that State Farm lost, is like four, technically 14, I'll put the link to that video right here. If you're looking for kind of just some more information on insurance and just some general topics, I also have a really good video that you'll like as well. 
I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.